welcome back. Today we're going to be going over what does PLL mean, along with comparing and contrasting a couple different methods. First off, the term PLL is an acronym standing for permutate last layer. That means that after we orient the last layer, we are then going to permutate the last layer, or just finish the cube and permutate all the pieces. Today we're going to look at a few different methods to get this cube to look like this cube. First off, let's take a look at the beginner's method. This method uses only two algorithms to permutate the entire last layer. The algorithms are tperm and uperm. We will use tperm to permutate the corners and uperm to permutate the edges. So for example, here I would look for headlights. Since there aren't any, I would just hold it anyway, do my tperm, and now I have headlights. I'll put these on the left, do tperm again. Now all of my corners are permutated. Now I will use a uperm permutate my edges. This might take a few tries, but eventually I will. So as you can see, two algorithms does not mean two steps. Now let's look at a more advanced method. Our next method will use one step to permutate the corners and then one step to permutate the edges, hence the name two look PLL. So there are actually only two cases for corners. There is one where you need to swap two diagonally, and then there's one where you need to swap two vertically. For the vertical one, we'll use tperm again, but for diagonal, we'll use yperm. I think that these are the two easiest algorithms to do this, but there are more out there. So, for instance, if I had this, I would see that I need to swap two diagonally, do my yperm algorithm, and then in one step, I did the corners. Now I will do the edges in one step. There are three cases for edges when you have all the corners permutated. There's uperm, hperm, and zperm. So this is a h perm. Now I'm done in only two algorithms. And for this one, it would be more of the same. I do this to get my corners permutated. And then we also have an h perm here, which I would simply solve in my second algorithm. For our last and most advanced method, we have one look PLL. In this method, you will permutate the corners and edges in the same step. This means that you'll have to memorize all 21 permutations of the last layer. For instance, here I would look, see that this is a JA perm, execute the algorithm, and the cube would be done. Now you might think that it's not important to memorize so many more algorithms just for a one step difference, but when you're timing your solves, every second is important. To put these methods to the test, I conducted a little experiment. I used DC timers function of scrambling just the permutation of the last layer, and then I timed myself using each method. Using the same five scrambles, here are my results. Just like a competition average of five, I took the fastest and the slowest outliers and did not include them in the final average. While I was doing this, I ran into a problem where sometimes two methods would solve something in the exact same way, usually a T and then a U perm. I also decided to not include one test that I did where it was a U perm because all three methods solved the U perm in the same way. Nonetheless, I did the math and found the averages and here are my results. As I expected, one look is the fastest method by far. Two look and beginner's method includes stopping, recognizing a case, and then doing another algorithm, which just takes too long and time to solves. Even though they were occasionally as fast as one look, they're not consistent enough to be a good method. Of course, PLL isn't all of it. There's also OLL. If you want to learn more about OLL, I have a video similar to this one called What is OLL? Also linked in the description. And that about wraps it up. If you want to learn any of the methods included in today's video, I have videos on all of them, all with links in the description. I hope this video was helpful to you, and for the future, good luck.